Rongo, thank you very much for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate this, dude. What's up, man? Thank you so much for having me, and I'm really excited. Yeah, man, it's awesome. Awesome to have you here. Now, I'm really, really interested in kind of getting to know a little bit about about you, your kind of where you're coming from with things, and your kind of story in Strongman. Now, I understand you moved at a, at a pretty young age. Hey? You moved from New Zealand to Australia when you're like 10. Yeah, well, sorry. Um, so I moved to Australia at the age of eighteen. Eighteen. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So I okay. moved over. Okay. Cool. So um, I moved. Yeah, I moved to a small town, a mining town in the middle of nowhere, in uh, Western Australia called Kalgoorlie, which is a gold mining town. And the reason I moved here was because uh, there was big money here. I had a cousin working here who was washing dishes, who was making more than I was making working in the freezing works, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, my, my mining towns in, out in Australia is like it's like a different world, man. It's crazy out there. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Right now, brother, it's forty-two degrees. Uh, the, the ground is red dirt, um, and that's the life we live here. <laughs> yeah. Man. So, how how did you find a kind of making the transition across from obviously being around uh, like your friends, your family, the life you knew? Uh, just kind of being in New Zealand to then removing yourself, coming to a completely new place and starting again, like that's going to have like a pretty big effect on a young kid, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, it's, I took a step into a whole new world. You know, I only had one cousin here and um, I, knew, I didn't know anyone. I just turned up on the doorstep with a bag and everything I knew growing up was pretty much gone overnight, you know, so I pretty much had to start my whole life again. Um, and going into the workforce at 18, going into oh, totally something I did not know anything about, mining, um, totally rattled me. So it was definitely an experience, a humbling experience, but I've been mining now for the past 15 years, you know, and uh, honestly, I wouldn't look back. Yeah, it's uh, it's obviously it's it's a big transition for you, and obviously picking up those skills and whatever is is going to be testing for you. What I love though is that amongst all of that, amongst the workload, amongst everything else, you've got the training in there as well. You've also got the family involved in there as well. It's like I don't think I know another person that crams quite so many things into a day as you do. You know, I, I watch your life in the day of on YouTube, and you're like, man, it's it is literally non-stop from beginning to the end of your day like how have you managed to juggle that over the years because that's that's just you know, that's a challenge in and of itself oh definitely definitely and i'll tell you right now this hasn't happened overnight you know this has taken years to find the balance and i say that to a lot of people this question gets up to me all the time how do i do it and what i say to everyone is balance um number one for me is family if it doesn't work with my family i do not do it at all and i'm very lucky that i have a supportive wife who believes in me and understands what I'm trying to achieve. So family's number one, work is number two, because without work, you don't pay the bills. And if you don't pay the bills, brother, you're mowing lawns. So, and strong man, obviously my passion is my third. So over the years, um, we've learned to find the balance and balance is key to life. So I'm, like I said, again, I'm very grateful that I have an understanding partner who believes in me and my dreams. But we also come together and say, well, if this works, it works. If it doesn't work, it's gone. Yeah, hundred percent. So have you have you kind of have you got to a point previously where you kind of you found that like maybe you've like just been working too much, you're running yourself into the ground, you're kind of getting run oh. down, or like what was it that you were struggling with? All the time, mate. Well, you know, over here we're doing twelve hour, fourteen hour shifts. You know what I mean? So man, I tell you what, trying to find the energy after work to go and train is a daily like what the hell? You know, but it just comes back to, you know, the reason why, you know, and the passion, you know, like strongman is my passion. I love the sport. I love everything about it. But finding the willpower after a long last day to go in and do what we have to do is testing. Yeah. But at the same time, too, I look at it like time, sometimes it's hard, but sometimes it's not hard. And you've got to do your best on the days you can, and you've got to do the best on the days you can't. Yeah, it's a, you can only control what you can control at the end of the day, can't you? And obviously, it's, it, for, for you, you've got 
you know what you need to do you've got your vision like I, I love that and I love that you kind of you really kind of reaffirm that you know put your goals out there write them down look at them daily see what you're working well, you, towards you have to, and that's what I push on to a lot of um, youth that I speak to and just people in general you know you've got to have a target you have to have a target otherwise you're just shooting everywhere you've got to set a goal you have to shoot a long term goal and short term goals man and I'm a strong believer on this once you set those goals then you've got to hold yourself accountable to get and do the work so you get the results. Because at the end of the day, the only reason you don't achieve the goal is because you don't put the work in. And that's just been straight up the guts. Yeah, it's true. I think a lot a lot of people look for external excuses and external reasons as to why perhaps, you know, they haven't quite achieved this or quite achieved that. But I think you're very right in what you're saying there is that at, you know, at the end of the day, if you want it bad enough and it is your passion and it is your dream, then you'll do anything that you need to do to get there. And I think it's kind of evident in kind of what you're putting out there, what you're showing, but then also like you said, you know, you you do a lot of youth work giving that message to the youth and letting them see actually you know what if you do plan this stuff out then you can make pretty much anything work for you um which is oh, awesome proof, proof is in the pudding brother and that's what you know my you know i am big on giving back and i'm big on giving back to a younger generation because reality is brother they're the next generation to come through and right now um our youth are struggling the reason is is because we don't have a lot of leaders out there you know, and we've got a lot of a lot of fathers trying to be fathers that never had a father. You know what I mean? It's it's so true. So my message is to use myself as an example. You know, with my bad upbringing, with mm-hmm. my hard times, of what I've been through, my experiences, yeah. to say, hey, look, no matter what, no matter where I come from, no matter the situation I've been through, look what I have still achieved. Look at the goals I've set and I've achieved. Them. Look what everyone said I can't do yet I've achieved them. You know, and that's the message I push strongly onto these young people because a lot of them just need leaders and people that believe in them. Yeah. You know, like yeah. just the other week I went out to an indigenous um, town in the middle of nowhere and these kids have forgotten about, mate. These poor kids are struggling with everything. And my main focus was to go there and say, hey, guys, you know, I come from something similar to what you're going through, yet I still achieved everything I did through hard work and not letting anyone tell me that I can't do anything pretty much yeah yeah and it's you know it's 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 nice that you know you can relate to them on so many levels and that they can see that they have that role model there that you know has has walked the line you know you've stepped in their shoes you understand what it feels like you can empathize with them and i think that's that's another issue for for another day but you know people people need to have role models that are like them so then they can realize that actually this is achievable oh, for them and i think it's so humbling for for, for for someone like yourself to take time out of like dude your schedule's so busy and there are a thousand and one reasons that you could make up to not go and do all of those things but it still comes as like the number one on your priority list and is this do you, do you feel like that's because of the relationship you did have like with your father and growing up and just kind of you know that you can now be there for those kids? Like, is that where it's all stemmed from? I, I think it's more that um, I, I've, I've been through a situation where a lot of kids are going through and I can see what needs to be fixed and I can see what we need. And I just feel like I've been given these amazing opportunities with my stature to be like, wow, you know, if there's something I can do, I'm going to do it. And like, I don't give a shit at what cost or anything like that, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, if I can walk out of that classroom knowing that I at least reached a few of those kids or inspired a few of them, and that's what it's about because when I grew up, I never had that. You know what I mean? I never had that. And a lot of people that I grew up with, we never had that. And I guarantee you right now, if we had had that, it would have made us think differently. A lot of kids out there are told that they are going to amount to nothing. A lot of kids are told that they won't achieve anything only because of their upbringing or their race or anything like that. And I'm, I'm out there stomping that. And I stomp it and I'll say that to anybody. They never put anyone down because you thought, shit, that's just sorry, the language, but that's just true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. It's, um, it's, it's really nice to, to kind of see these kids being given the opportunity to break out of the kind of societal norms that have been put on them and say actually you know what even though this is kind of what people say that i'm going to be and this is people don't think i'm going to amount to anything people then use that as the fuel for their fire 
Like it's so easy oh, yeah. to, to take that information and to be pushed under the sand and it just feel like it's crushing you. But it's amazing when you get those people and you get that flick of the switch in your brain and you're like, oh no, this is actually my superpower. Like I can use this to my advantage now. Oh yes. And that's a very powerful thing once you learn how to do that. And once you teach people how to do that, you know, can you, um, you know, uh, what is it? What are they called? Haters and my motivators. You know what I mean? That, that's just thrown around a lot. Yeah. And once you learn how to use it, man, that is a very powerful tool. So who, who did you, because obviously you're, you're, you're a very motivational person yourself, who was the kind of first person that kind of really uh, brought that out of you or kind of said, you know, you're, you're capable of doing more than this, Rongo, like you, you need to pull your socks up and get out there? It's, 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 it stemmed from a young age, you see, because I was adopted at the age of seven and um, I was adopted into um, a family and they uh, ran a farm yeah. and they didn't have much at all, okay, so... Straight off the bat, mate, I was told that if you want anything in life, you have to work for it. reason is because we didn't have much, but what we did have, we worked our asses off for. And we were, we, were, we were taught to work. So that was that was implanted in me at a young age, and I took that and pushed that on through life. As I got older, especially when I moved to Australia, I started hanging out with the older crowd, a more wiser crowd, and started just dropping bombs on me at a young age saying, you know, if you want to be successful, you have to put the work in. You have to set a plan. You have to set your goals. So I... Straight off the bat, I hung around with people that were very, very motivating, but also clued on. And I sort of just absorbed it all, man, and then sort of just kept it together. And along with being positive and all of that, mate, honestly, I was a class, class clown growing up, so that was just, <laughs> it just came natural. So everyone asks this true story. So everyone always asks my wife, you know, they're like, is he like that all the time? And she's just like, you wouldn't, you, you, you wouldn't understand. Like, he just doesn't stop. And what's worse, brother, is I'm a morning person. Um, um, I fly out of bed, brother, and then, yeah, it's on, it's on. But there's a rule in the house, because I'm not allowed to talk to her in the morning until she finished the coffee. Once she finishes the coffee, then I can talk to her. <laughs> Number one rule of the house. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's for your own health and safety, man. Though I understand that. That's, uh, that's fair enough. I don't, yeah. break it, I don't break that rule. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want those repercussions. Because, because on the other hand, they yeah, they get. They yeah, get yeah. <laughs> I love that, man. But I, I love that. Like you've got to have, you've got to have that positivity, and you've got to have that energy. And I, I am a true believer in the fact that if you have that positivity, if you think about stuff like that, again, it empowers you and it energizes you. I think uh, being negative and surrounding yourself with negativity, spending all day long talking about kind of like the bad things, the things you don't enjoy, the things you don't want in your life. Like, I'm sure that has a, a draining effect on you. Like, it just tires oh, you out, it beats you down, it makes you tired, man. Oh, good. It's unnecessary stress, brother. And half of it's not even your own stress, you know? And that's, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. I have my negative days and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But positive takes work. Positive is a practice. You know what I mean? Like, I'm... You know, like I, I said that in my, I did a story not too long ago and someone asked me, well, why are you happy all the time? And I said straight up the back, I said, well, every day I wake up and I go through my gratitude list of what I'm thankful for, you know? And like, man, I've had some rough runs in my life so far, you know, with going to prison, going, doing all this, man. And when you're set on your ass, when you're at the bottom, you start thinking about how grateful you are for your life, especially looking around the world today, man, this, you know, people, people are doing it rough. So that's all. That's how I start my day. I start with my gratitude list. Go back what I'm thankful for and what I'm thankful to have. That puts a smile on your face, man. It does. That's what I do. Anyway. Yeah, a hundred percent. I I I love hearing that. I've done that many a times before, and I think it's it's a fantastic tool because it's one of those things like you. You don't actually always realize all of the things you've done. You don't really realize all of the things that you've achieved mm -hmm. until you start writing these things down and you think about, okay, what, is, what am I actually truly grateful for? What am I truly happy for? What, what has brought me joy that I have brought into my life? You actually realize that these things really start to mount up, but they just yeah. kind of just get caught in the back of your mind and you don't really consciously think about them. And then when you put them down on paper and you see it, you're like, oh shit, man, actually, you know what? Life yeah, is hell, pretty yeah. good. It's pretty good. Like yeah. it could be a lot worse. No, that's definitely right, brother. Hundred percent with you on that, man. Hundred percent. So when when you're because like you know we, don't, we 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 all don't have good days. When you're having a day where 
you're kind of you're not quite on the beat things aren't feeling great is there any things that you kind of that you go back to that you like to do is it a case of you just um, like yeah. to remove yourself um, from the situation how do you cope i find myself um honestly hand on heart rather i can live to my family you know no matter like i have days man when i have days especially with work and and especially if i don't have a good session i just come home and center myself with my family and my kids and that, and that does it for me. Like, I could have the shittest attitude. As soon as I walk through the front door and I sit with my kids, man, um, it all comes down. You know, because reality is, is like, fucking shit happens. But when you come home, home is home, and you have to be a role model for your children, and you have to just be a man and man up only shit, right? So that's how I, I said to myself, to my family. I love that. I and love if that, that doesn't work, Carla, if that doesn't work, the wife's and sort me out. So. <laughs> <laughs> so the trick is, you just gotta have a so strong other half to make sure that they they yeah, set a tone yeah. straight. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's brilliant. So, um, in regards to kind of uh, coming into your strong man, obviously you're you're at a stage now where we're really making the big push to get into big arena tours, big shows, big competitions. Um. How are you feeling with kind of uh, the, the the pressures leading up to these competitions and stuff? Obviously, when you're dealing with, you know, the work, the family, the traveling, the training, that stress as well as having these competitions to look to look towards. How do you deal with that psychologically? Because it must be a lot for the mind. Yes, definitely. I, I think, I'm, honestly, I've sort of just within the last probably six months, especially being with my new coach, um, Vash, um, you know, everything's sort of come together. I've had some amazing coaches over the years, and I've had some amazing training partners and stuff like that, but over the years, I've learned a lot of things, and I've learned to plan better. So, you know, we've grinded the last, the last six years been a grind, okay? Up and down, trying to balance work and everything like that. We've finally got to the stage now where we can actually plan things, plan our programming, plan our competitions, which is um, honestly gonna gonna help me big time moving forward. So I think a lot of maturity has happened over these years. A lot of the lessons have been learned, and what's good is I'm learning from those lessons. So right now I'm at a I'm in a good position where now it's like all right, we're in a position now where we can actually get invited to some good shows. So let's put some time aside and put some planning aside and get there and do a good job. Yeah, and it's a case of what once you're there, it's a case of we well, just got to let the performance show for itself. But obviously, getting there is the hard part. So, what would you say has kind of been uh, the biggest things that kind of Baz has kind of interjected into your training that's kind of changed things up and made you go, okay, actually, realistically, I probably should have been doing more of this, or maybe I shouldn't have been doing quite so much of that, or is it just technique? What is it that he's kind of changed up? Um, it's, it's been a lot, you know. With Bass, he, he, he has a plan. He has a, a short-term plan and a long-term plan. And one thing about my training previously was every time I got into the gym, I bit myself up. Like I went in there and just went as hard as I could and just pretty much pushed every session. Where when I first hooked up, hooked up with Bass, he sent me my first program and I was, I, I, just, I, had, to, I had to talk to him and say, uh, are you sure this is right, mate? Because I'm, I'm missing half the program. And I just couldn't put in my head that sometimes doing less is more beneficial than doing more. So this has been uh, just, it just shocked me just to, to realize like, oh, maybe I don't need to go in there and bust my ass and break my break every session. Maybe I should just do what I'm told. And that's been the biggest thing is like backing off what I'm usually used to doing, going in and just hitting the numbers that he said. And before I knew it, things started going through the roof, you know? So it's just been on that side, a lot of planning on his side and just working with me to look at, okay, then we need to work on this, you know, like, what have you been doing for that? Oh, I haven't done anything. Okay, what have you been doing for that? Oh, I haven't done anything. So it's been like really positive, eh? so positive. Yeah, and you're also you've also worked uh, a little bit with uh, Stan in regards to your diet as well, haven't you? Kind of changing things up. Definitely, and that was a game changer, especially so working on the minds, brother. You eat when you can, whatever you can. That's just how it was. And I will tell you right now, most of my career, brother, I've just ate anything, 
anything I can get my hands on, whether it's junk food, whether whatever, because that's what it is. And that's what the mentality too was, is how I have to get big guys to eat big. Yeah, Not, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it is, you have to eat big, but you have to eat right. So working with Stan, man, you know, he was he was awesome too. He was checking up on me weekly and still is. And just going over everything, over everything. And once I made that adjustment, again, everything started changing. My performance got better. My recovery got better. I started feeling better. I started getting muscles in places that I never knew I could get muscles in places. <laughs> 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 it was awesome. Man. So, you know, I've been very, very blessed. And I'm so thankful that over the last six to eight months, I've had some pretty cool people around me just pushing me in the right direction. Yeah, so what what is kind of, uh, what is the game plan moving forward in regards to your competitions? Obviously, say you're you're kind of, you're working more specifically towards things now. So is it a case of you're saying, okay, I'm just, I'm going to peak for these competitions each year? Are you still kind of open to doing whatever, guest spots, et cetera? Yeah, well, quite honestly, but the reality is is that um, the competitions these days, especially pro level, like, they're no joke. Okay, you have to turn up with certain numbers and ready to perform. And um, I've taken a good look at myself, me and my coach, and we're going, wow, oh, you know, fair enough, I've got a massive press, that's awesome. Yeah, congratulations, but one press don't win a competition. So we've gone back to the drawing board and I said, well, let's, reality is, is that I've got a lot of weaknesses, all right? And we need to work on these weaknesses to be a better athlete. So let's put this time aside that we need to. There's no use going to a competition and hoping to do well. There's no use going to the competition half ready. Let's put some time aside to work on these weaknesses and tune everything in and put a plan together. So quite honestly, brother, right now, my focus is to focus on these weaknesses that I have. So moving forward in my career, I can keep up. And so is that something that you, obviously, it, it could be short term, it could be long term, depending upon what you're kind of looking at, at, at sorting out and readjusting. But is it a case of that you feel like you're going to be in a position where by kind of the the end of the season, you're in a position where you feel like those things are tightened up? Are you giving yourself a little oh, bit definitely. more time? What, what, how long do you, do you reckon this is going to take to kind of get, get well, into well, place? Well, honestly, yeah, well, quite honestly, but I, over the years, I haven't really given it time. To, um, to put the work in that I need to. And um, I just feel like that's what needs to be done. You know, like I've worked my ass off and I've had some awesome achievements that I'm proud of and things that, you know, I thought I could never do that I've done. But to take the next step, to keep up with these, the top guys in the world, I feel this needs to be done. You know, when sometimes as athletes, you need to take a step back and have a look at yourself and say, all right then, um, to move forward, what do we need to do? Yeah, and, and and for you, do you think that it's a case of that you need to be in a position where you can be devoting more time and energy into your training and recovery? Do you feel like in the position that you're currently in now, you can still achieve all of those things? It can all still be done? Or do you feel like you need to make another change before you kind of that final piece of the jigsaw gets into place? No way. I feel that even with everything going on in my personal life, with work, with um, life commitments, I still believe it's possible, brother. I believe that putting a good plan together um, will work. Remember, when we're prepping for a competition, everything goes out the door. When we're training to get stronger, everything's on a plan. You know what I mean? We put a plan together. When you're prepping for a comp, two months out of comp, you're nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Everything, eating, everything like that. As right now, when we're building restructure, everything's not so stressful. We have numbers we have to hit, but we can still keep a plan together. And I feel just having a good plan with a good coach, good support team, good people around me, um, we can definitely achieve anything we put our minds to. So when, uh, when you train, do you tend to train in a group or do you tend to prefer to train by yourself? Um, I uh, Over the years, brother, I've had... I've trained with big groups. I've trained with no one. I've trained with one. It's all about the atmosphere. That's what I believe. If you've got a good atmosphere, that's going to bring positive vibes. Bringing positive vibes is going to bring good lists. Yeah, I, I've got to say, I, I don't know of too many other people that I see lifting to the same kind of music that you do traditionally. We, we tend to see a lot of heavy metal, screaming music, heavy bass, 
but you're like rocking yeah. out like front squatting to like Billie Jean and all sorts of fun stuff. Oh, man. It's it just incredible. Everyone has, everyone has their flavor, brother. You know what I mean? Everyone has their flavor. Like, don't, don't worry. When it's time to work, like, if the, the mood in the gym changes. But, like, why waste all your energy and your mental state on hyping yourself up all training when there's no need to? There's a time to do it, and there's time not to. And, man, I just feel like if you've got those good vibes going, everyone's smiling, everyone knows their job, everyone knows what they're up to, man, you get the job done, but you get it done with a smile. Yeah, I love that. I, and I think that's it's a really interesting mentality to go into because like especially in a sport like this where again it seems, you know, it's so alpha, it's so intense, like everyone just seems pissed off in the gym, like they're just ripping weights, no one's smiling. Mm. To to come in there, because I'm very much the same, like if anyone sees me in the gym, there's like there's two moods. There's like headphones in, fuck off, don't talk to me. Or I'm there and I'm dancing in the middle of the gym, I'm bopping yeah, out, I'm hell popping hell. a lock in and I'm just having a good time. And it's like, yeah. it's it's really strange when people see that because they're like, this is really bizarre. But it's like, no, like if you're enjoying yourself and you're feeling it and like it makes you happy, then why won't you do it? Because it just makes the session more enjoyable. You have more fun with it. Like it, it yeah. changes the mood. But again, like going back to it, you need to know when when is the time to do what. And again, that's something that I think comes over time as well. Like when you oh, train for as many years as you and I have, then it, it, it is a case yeah, of that. Exactly. Like yeah. everyone, like, at the same time, everyone sees the happy go but no one actually sees the animal when it's time to do animal. You know what I mean? But so, for a different time. do you do you find like coming into competition and stuff? Because I think it's really interesting to kind of see the mentality with everyone. Do you find like when you come into competition, like you're you're listening to this music because you're kind of you're subduing that animalistic nature in your head, like you're having fun with it because you don't want to get into that kind of like adrenaline fueled anger rage state oh, yeah, too no, early. You like you that. kind of have to you have to peak, yeah. and it's like okay, right. <laughs> when you step oh, over the line and the, the ref blows the whistle, it's like, flick switch, yeah, now we go. Yeah. But that, that's training, you get what I mean? When we're training for a comp, we're not only training our body, but we're training our mental state. You know, every session leading into comp, you take that step further to get your mind ready. You know what I mean? Remember, it's the mind first, the body follows. So for me personally, to leading into the last few weeks of training for a competition, my mind is solid. When it's time to work, we hit the switch, the right music's on, the right moves on. You know, in the session leading up, we're building our session up for that peak moment. You know what I mean? So we start chilled out, and as it goes on, we start picking up the intensity. By the time I'm hitting my top weight or doing what I need to do to work on the fire. And that's what we learn to teach the body to do at a competition. You know, we're there, we're good. As soon as that whistle blows, brother, we're on. Yeah, and how how do you deal with kind of the, the the longer drawn out competitions? Obviously, you know you can be waiting long periods of time uh, in, in between some of these events, and trying to kind of keep on top of that is very very hard. So again, is this something that kind of goes back to the, the mental state? Are you taking yourself aside? Are you psyching yourself up? Are you kind of getting pre workout in? Are you getting the yeah, caffeine that's, in? That's something, what? That's, yeah, that's something that's taking. You know, I'm still trying to figure that out. You know, and every athlete will say they're still trying to figure that out. What I used to do in my younger days was always be tense, you know, at a competition. We could be waiting an hour or even longer for the next event, you know, and half the time I'll be still tense, weeping around, you know, just burning energy. Where these days, once the event's done, once the whistle's done, it's back. All right. Not much I can do about that. No matter what the result is, it is what it is. Let's just go and chill out, get our mind ready for the next event. It is what it is. Half the time you see me just over chatting with the boys rolling around on the ground, you know what I mean? Because I've got myself to this state where there's no use stressing over what just happened. Let's just go and get ready for the next event and just get ready. When it's time to warm up, that's when we switch. You know what I mean? I'm still trying to protect that and like it's something that's gonna take time, but that's what I usually do. Do you find that that it's kind of uh, previously it's been kind of to a detriment to to your kind of coming into your competition and stuff like being over psyched up and just kind of going into it without having that break? Did you go through kind of a couple of competitions where you're like, right, I definitely know that I've overdone it too much on this now. Yeah. Next competition, <laughs> let's tone it back and see where this takes yeah. us. Yeah, and that's why I said over time I've learned my lesson with that. You know, like. Damn, I tell you right now, my first competition, I think I was just charging around all day, like just running around, like tense, like yelling, screaming, gee, I think by the time we got to the last event, I was done. <laughs> but like I said, but that's what you think, you know? You go, oh, 
you know what I mean? But yeah, over time, where like I said, over time I've learned that to be like, wow, well, you know, take a step back. And like, you see it all the time now, pros. When it's time to go, they go. After that, they're just sitting in the corner, eating something, like chatting, like relaxing. Like they're like, you know, they, they go from this wild animal to this like cuddly bear. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's, that, that, that's it though, you know, when, we, when it's time to work, we work. When it's not time to work, we just work. Yeah, I, th- I think it's 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 really interesting because I think strongman is one of those it's one of those things you know where every single event you you know you're you're literally pushing your body to the limit on whatever that given event is. Mm. That then when you come away from that, you know you're going to have to do it again within the best part of you know half an hour to an hour. So actually wasting all that time standing around doing this doing that when you can actually just optimize sit down chill out relax yep. get your mind into the correct state let your body recover some of that energy really it makes so much more sense i think a lot of people find and i mean i can stand hand on heart and say that i still do it now but when you get into the competition and you're around everyone else and kind of you have that energy between yeah. competitors like it's so easy to get caught up in it and just oh okay yeah well this that and that. Oh, okay i've just got to go over there and i'm gonna go and do this yeah. and you're like oh man i haven't sat down for like four hours and i've done two events like mm. i need to get some some glycogen in me and go and lie down for a bit yeah. <laughs> so um so in in regards to when you come into competition do do you have a structure in terms of you say like uh this is what i know i need to get in my body between uh events are you very big on kind of uh you know the the hydration the food what is it for you is it a case of that you feel like you can't eat like i know for myself when i come into competition i'm so fucking nervous i never want to eat i feel really really ill the thought of having big food in my stomach just makes me sick so i'm snacking on little things gummy bears here and there keeping my glycogen up what kind of stuff are you doing um comp day i'll get up early and have a big breakfast and i'll try and get that in at least three hours before the comp or even more um, just so that that settles you, you know what I mean? Because um, honestly, no matter what comp it is, leading up to the first event, a nervous is out, you know. And like that's why I like to get in early. So I'll get up straight away. I'll have my breakfast plan, and I'm talking big breakfast. So I'll go in and load first thing in the morning, and um, from there I'll just have food on me, and I'll just go with the flow. Like you know, I'll just go with the flow of the day. I'm definitely putting food in throughout the day. I'm not putting in big, big amounts, but I'm just sort of just grazing throughout the day. And that's how I've sort of found my balance, you know, with the, with the big breakfast hitting in the morning, especially with the night before I'll put a big meal in, that sort of, that, that sort of keeps me, you know, where I need to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it, it makes sense, you know, try, try and get those carbs in early. So, so in regards to your morning prep coming into competition, <laughs> When you're you're getting into competition, how much time are you kind of devoting to kind of doing warm ups, mobilizations, getting ready for for the events? Because I know, especially at the, the, the younger stages, it's very very different. Um, for me personally, um, I'll do a lot of my warm ups in the motel, okay, before I even leave for the event. And what that is, I love to do um, breathing. I do a lot of breathing. Um, not only that, I do. Um, I actually do my warm up with my children if they're with me. And okay. We'll do like an old school. We'll do an old school rugby warm up, man. Like running up and down, stretching, like make it exciting. So I always try and do that with my kids if they're with me, and that just sets my mood for the day. Quite honestly, that gets me limber, gets my blood flowing, especially after breakfast. You know, that, you, know, you know, a lot of the top guys they'll have a meal and go for a walk, where I'll have my big breakfast and then get my kids moving, and then we'll just go and do a bit of run around good stretching and just get my mind in that mental state that I need to be. When I get to competition, I'm pretty much nice and warm and then I'll just warm up on the implements and get going. Because I'm, in my head, I'm really mentally prepared of what I need to do. I've took all the boxes before I've left my room to warm everything up, stretch everything out and get things moving and pretty much go time when we get there. So when you uh, when you say you're doing your breathing, is this kind of like the like Wim Hof type stuff that you're doing? like? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sick. How long have you been doing that for? I've been doing that for a long time, brother. And if everyone out there who's watching who doesn't know who Wim Hof is, go and check him out. Um, his methods work for life. Not just for ice baths and everything like that. Clear the mind, strengthen the mind, strong body. 
So yeah. kind of a I love that. I'm so, doing that. I'm doing that. Karen? so is uh, kind of you, you, you're talking back to, and again, it all comes back to, to like the mindset, the mentality with you, which I love hearing so much. Um, is this something that you kind of discovered that has helped you not just in strongman, but just in like in your personal life, whether it's dealing with like oh, mental yeah. health stuff, like is, is, is that something that you found has to kind of alleviate some of those maybe anxieties and stresses in your own mind? You know, I surround myself with good people. A lot of the people that I um, uh, hang around with today, we all do it. You know, we meditate, we breathe, everything like that. We do it all the time. Like not many people know this about me, but, I do it on a day, you know what I mean? Like you have to, you know, I prepare my mind for the day. I prepare my mind for training. I prepare it, you know, everything's mental. And like, especially in competition, like if you ever watch me compete, you'll see me breathing. And it's not breathing because I'm tired, I'm breathing because I'm preparing my body and my mind. I'll always go away and have moments to myself, you know, in my head, I've done the event a million times, you know? It's that full process we've put together. So back to the breathing, man, I've been doing that for years. Um, and I, I highly recommend people get into it. Like, check them out and try. And tr try it for life, but also try it for your training. And I I honestly swear by it. Like, I don't I don't go to a session unless I've done my um, breathing meditation before I go. And it's a part of my routine every day. Like, I'll get home and I'll sit there and do what I have to do. I won't leave until I've done it because that puts my mind and my body into that mental state of, all right, work's done, life is good, let's mentally prepare the mind and body because we're going to train. Bang. 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 So, so you're doing, you'll, you'll do that, you'll come home, you'll spend the time with the kids and whatever, then you'll kind of do like your, your rollering, you'll do your meditation, you'll get your mind straight, mm -hmm. and then you go out to train? Yeah, definitely. So all the rolling, the stretching, the medit it's all part of it. I have a routine I do that it, it centers me, it gets me ready. So no matter what the hell is happening throughout the day or what's going on around me, that prepares me. And so when I walk through the gym door, it's game time. I know what I'm here for. I'm not bringing in the baggage of life, bringing in the baggage of, baggage of work. I'm straight here, I'm focused. All right, let's get this done so we can go home and get ready for tomorrow. Yeah, and it's 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 nice because it's almost like you're kind of you're drawing a line under the day. You know, whatever has happened up until that point. You know, we're going to draw a line underneath it. Going into training, this is a fresh start. This is the training, and kind of having that disassociation with you know whether it was a good day, fantastic. I'm going to use that power. If it was a bad day, okay, I'm going to use that power and leave that behind. Mm -hmm. Now Definitely. is the training session. Get this done, and then when you get home, it's it's the whole thing. It's just ticking boxes. And it sounds it's like you... simple, simple key things, brother. Like I said, this has taken me years to, to to put together. I'm still trying to put it together, but simple little key things can set you up to succeed in what you're trying to achieve. You know what I mean? Like if I go into training with a negative attitude, or I go into training because something's happened here, my mind's going to be elsewhere. I'm not going to be focused on what I'm I'm trying to do because I'm focused on something else. So do you find that you? you like to get those like any issues or whatever so like let's maybe say that you know you, you've you've had a conversation with your other half or whatever hasn't gone how you wanted it to in your head are you like okay i need to get this solved before i go off to training or are you kind of like okay I'm it is what it is I'm like yeah. yeah no i don't just dump shit and say like oh, i'll pick that up later but you know for instance um i know you know for example okay i've had a bad day you know, things haven't gone right at work. All right, let's bring it home. Okay. Chill with the family for a bit. You know, like, all right, see this, things happen. Let's get into our breathing and motivation and everything like that. Let's put that stuff aside. There's nothing I can do right now that's going to change what's happened. Let's pick that up as soon as I can and deal with it straight up the gut. You know what I mean? Now, that's a big thing. For the, for the little things, man can get sorted. Yeah, and it's uh, again, it's it's kind of coming back, and you speak very much openly about kind of mental health and and whatever as well, which I love hearing about. But kind of you know actually talking this stuff out and saying you know okay, I have got this issue, and I do need to talk about it, and I need to get it off of my chest because it's not just you know this isn't just uh, a 
about you know my training this is about my mental fortitude yeah. this is about mm-hmm. up here being healthy and i think uh you know and i can i can hold my hand up to this and say that not enough of us probably do that and not enough of us probably oh, open up and, and speak and i love 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 that you are uh, a huge proponent of saying you know what if you're not all right you've got to talk about it you've got to get off of your chest you've got to, you've got to get mm-hmm. it out of your head and like I, I touch on it a lot with people is that like, you know, I've hit rock bottom. I hit rock bottom when I went to prison. But in there, I learned how to speak out and start opening up to speak to people because I was a closed book most of my life, you know? And when, 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 when I was brought up, it was like, no, you're a man. You show you're a man. You don't show your emotions. You know, you're a man. That's how we were brought up. Where that's not the case at all. No way. We're human. We're one, you know? If we have problems, we need to speak about it. I'm very thankful that I have people around me that I'm comfortable just to go and talk to and say, hey, brother, this is what happened today, you know? Wow, da, 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 da. And straight away, they're like, wow, well, man, that's huge. How do you feel about it? You know what I mean? You, you, and whoever's watching, if you think that you're a pussy, that you can't open up and speak to someone, push it, man. Like, I tell you right now, all it takes is one simple conversation with someone to let them know how you're feeling, well, you know, just in general. And I guarantee that shit will hit you back straight away. And you feel so clear, you feel good, you're like, shit, why was that even bothering me? It's because you're holding on to it, brother. That's why it was bothering me, because you're holding on to shit that you don't need to. Let it go. Yeah, it's, it's amazing because once you kind of get on the other side of it and you realize actually kind of like you have that cathartic release of like, okay, I feel so much better now. I don't have that weight off of your shoulders. There's almost like that voice in your head that's like, why haven't you done this earlier? Why? You, you idiot. No, like, why? come on. <laughs> hey, why? It was only one packet of Tintans. Why are we associated with that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Tintans are delicious, man. I don't blame anyone for no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> I'm interested to to, to to kind of hear. Obviously, uh, you know, you, you spent a bit of time in prison while you were there. Is it a case of that you you kind of had the time to be more introspective? Were you meeting people that you were kind of you were seeing the reflection of yourself in, or were you meeting people that were kind of saying, "Hey, man." what the fuck are you doing? You shouldn't be in here. This is what you need to be doing with your life. Like, where where was the kind of, like, wake-up call? What kind of spectrum were you working on there? One, the, this is the, okay. So, the most dangerous thing about prison is time. The amount of time that you put into a cell by yourself. Time alone is what destroys a lot of people. Okay? Time alone. So, um, before prison, I was around heaps of people. I was always around people. So when I was thrown in a cell by myself, wow. Wow. What happened for me was, is I started doing a lot of soul searching, okay? I started actually looking into myself and, and, and looking at myself and saying, oh, well, I've got no one else to talk to. Um, I might as well talk to myself. As long as I don't answer myself back, I'm good. So. I started actually doing shitload of soul searching, man, and started looking at myself as a, as a human being and as a person. And just, you know, going through issues that I've had that I didn't know I had and just started pretty much fixing myself. And honestly, brother, it was a shit situation. It was a shit situation. But out of it came a man that um, loved himself. You know, and I say that open and honestly, is uh, I didn't really know who I was or what I was about. But when I, the, the day I was released, I knew exactly who I was. Uh, I loved who I was and um, very respectful in a lot of ways, but um, really loved my family too, man, you know? So that's what really happened in me was a whole lot of soul searching and looking at myself. Because, you know, the saying is, is, if you can't fix anyone else until you fix yourself, you can't love anyone else until you love yourself. So that right there was a shit situation, but it was actually um, really good for me and my family. Did you find that kind of the, like, the vibe and the environment that you're in in there, obviously, with the other people is, uh, is counterintuitive to kind of you trying to think like that? 
or do you think that because that do you think that there are a lot of other people that are also on that same journey so it's a case of that you're all kind of in some strange convoluted way all kind of going through the same thing together or is it a case of that there is that real fight back of like i'll oh, stop thinking like that what are you doing come on don't don't worry about that you know you're one of us like at, like what's it like of course, of course, yeah, yeah. the energy, the, the amount of different energies in there is crazy, you know, like it, within a switch, just like that, within a second, you can go from good to real bad. So like, matter, the amount of people that I met, the amount of different characters I met was crazy, you know what I mean? So it was a constant battle, like I said, this was a test of myself to try and keep myself mentally sane, but also keep myself sane from everyone else because man it's a negative place in there it's prison it's not a positive place no one wants to be there no bloody way and i tell you what i, I think i met the amount of lawyers i've met in there that weren't lawyers <laughs> that knew everything oh man so it became a test of character for me, you know to learn how to deal with different people in different situations which has um helped me in so much in life you know dealing with the negative people dealing with the angry people dealing with the sad people dealing with the uh, the, you know, the less fortunate people. And um, me being me, I just keep being myself, being positive. You know, here's a story that no one knows. So when I first went in, I was Australia's strongest man. I was 150 kilos. Um, I was three days out from arms. And I didn't get to go. I went to prison. When I walked in there, I was a machine. I was ready to lift. Um... So there was nothing else to do. They didn't have any gyms or anything like that. So I decided, stuff it. There's no gyms in here, but I can figure something out. So I started training um, with one guy. And we started making up these workouts. And I take you to know, I came up with the, a crazy prison workout. And I would, lift, I would lift the other inmates. And at the start, the prison guards were a bit weary of it. They were like, what the hell is going on here? So I would chuck two guys on my shoulders and I would squat. I'd get the um, broomstick out of the um, out of the kitchen and I'll hold it like a bench bar and I'd get guys to stand on my knuckles and I'd bench press. I would put, I'll take the sheet off my bed. I'm not lying to you, just i will take the sheet off my bed and I'll put it on the edge of the couch and I'll get people to sit on the couch and I'll lift the couch like a deadlift. Um, I came up with all these crazy workouts, man, and then and, and it worked. Everyone at the start thought I was crazy, but by the time I had left, I had 10 to 15 people training with me nonstop. So in my mind, I set a goal, you know, it's a shitty situation, but I had set a goal to say, well, there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing I can do in this situation, but what I can do is do something. And I started training, and I turned my mind and my body into a machine with all these random workouts that I came up with, man, like, and, and they worked, you know? And no one would know that. No one would know that, but just, you know, the prison guard and stuff like that. When I got out, I was an absolute machine. Not strong, but I was ready because I'd mentally prepared myself and my body to know that the comeback is real and the comeback is on. Yeah, it's, it sounds like, you know, as much of a setback as it was, it was like your mind never really ever strayed from that overarching yeah. thought process, which is incredible. Um, like that's such a testament to your own mental fortitude and your ability to have that laser, laser focus. I think anyone that has that laser focus, you know, you're going to be successful in literally whatever aspect of life you choose to do but for someone like yourself you know when it, it requires so many hours of hard work in the gym um it's it's really really tough when you're put in that situation but again it's like you've chosen to make it your superpower rather than it be your detriment like it's awesome yeah. mm. so definitely an experience highly don't recommend it to anyone out there <laughs> Yeah, if, but, if, uh, if you're thinking about it, uh, don't. No, sorry. But uh, tick in the bucket list, done. <laughs> so, in hey, hey. yeah, it is what it is. In regards to, like, <laughs> your, your training and whatever, I think, well, I mean, I can kind of speak from, from my own personal experience, but I think training has a very special part in a lot of our lives because it's kind of uh, it's kind of like a cornerstone it's a foundation you know it's the thing that's always there for you uh what kind of got you first into training and and kind of what were you using it for and how did it develop from there 
Quite honestly, um, I never when I when I first started out, I never really went to the gym. No way. Um, I played a lot of sport. I played rugby, but um, my job, I'm a scaffolder by trade, and it's it's for long. Like we're carrying shit on our shoulders all day, every day. We're moving shit around, climbing shit, stuff like that. So, um, when I started getting into strongman. The only reason I went was because of um, my previous coach, Carl White, who was a former World's Strongest Man competitor. Um, he came to town and was working security. And um, I've always been randomly strong at my job, so I could lift a little bit more than everyone else and um, do things that not everyone else could do. And when I heard of this guy that could train strong man that was really strong, it was sort of a challenge. I was like, oh, you know, the boys did it. <laughs> I went and met Carl and I said to him, oh, these are the exact words of uh, Jebba. I heard you're a bit of a strong man. So we go for a train. <laughs> those are my exact words. And he looked at me and just shook his head and said, no. <laughs> but, um, yeah, long story short, we started training and then um, uh, I started picking it up, picking it up really well. And um. I really started enjoying the, um, the challenge, you know what I mean? The challenge of um, lifting something that I couldn't, you know, had never lifted. Um, the addiction of like becoming strong, you know, started started becoming real. I, I think it was more to the achievement, you know, setting little goals because I was doing that before training. I would set little goals, especially in my sport or in business or whatever. I would set little goals, and when you achieve that, you get a little hunger. You know what I mean? And that's what happened in training. But in training, they came a lot regularly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, because you're, you're hitting those PRs, you're hitting rep PRs, you're hitting weight PRs, like you're, you're, you're just getting that. And you know as well as I do, when you hit a PR, brother, how, how do you feel? Incredible. There's no better feeling, man. Exactly. It's so good. And, uh, so that, and that, that becomes an addiction. And like that's what started happening. It was like, wow, I'm, getting, I'm really liking this and I'm loving it. It's, it feels good, you know, and that's where it started. It was like, hell yeah. And then um, I think I went to my first comp and I won it. And um, when I rocked up, no one even, I, me being me, I rocked up in a hoodie. <laughs> I rocked up in a hoodie, like no one even knew who I was. I didn't know anyone, rocked up. Um, and I destroyed it. <laughs> and all the equipment they had done there, I just made, me and a mate had a welder, we just welded a few things together in my shed and was like, oh, we'll figure it out started watching videos on YouTube on how to do it. And then, yeah, went from there. <laughs> That's incredible. Like, proper ghetto yeah. ghetto equipment, like, just I, made I, in the back I, seat. And I, I said, I'm like, I was nervous as hell. I didn't know anyone. So I just sat in the corner with my audio on, like, just like that. Like, okay. And when they called my name, I jumped up and went for a run. <laughs> so no, that's how it started. So when your so your first competition, did you come into your first competition? What category did you go into? Did you jump straight into open? Did you do did you do no, yeah. novice centers? You yeah. went straight into open. No, nah, I went straight into open. So I did a qualifier for WA Strongest Man. Uh, WA Strongest Man. So I did my first qualifier and um, won that, and then trained some more, went to the finals, and and won that. And that was my introduction to strongman. I was like, all right, shit, okay. But I was very lucky that I had Kyle with me because he was just training me in the backyard because we both worked on the mines together. We were both scaffolders. So we'd go to work, and then after work, we'd go train. And then that was our that was our thing. We just train, train, train. And then he said, oh, what do you want to do is pump? And I was like, oh, am I ready for a pump? And he said, well, we'll soon find out. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I've, I've already booked you in. Time to see if you can swim. Like, uh, let's go. Oh, oh, right. Let's go. So, yeah, man. That was the introduction. And ever since that comp, I was fell in love, you know, and just, yeah, haven't really looked back and just like, have you, every year set a goal. Have you found that kind of with, uh, with Strongman that you really kind of picked certain aspects up of it very quickly. Were there were there aspects that you you really struggled to to get to grips with, or did it all kind of come quite quite naturally for you? Oh, well, like I said I was brought up on a farm, so I was used to hard labour. Yeah, work like, um, ethic wasn't the problem. It was just um, learning the techniques. You know what I mean? Like being a scaffolder, I'm lifting things above my head all day, every day. So naturally, I knew I was going to be a good presser. 
So it was just learning the techniques. Um, you know, at the start, deadlifts dead have always been hard for me because I never ever really did it, you know what I mean? So that's something I've been working on. So over time, and with anything, good things take time, and you just got to keep, keep learning, keep learning, learning from your mistakes. <laughs> yeah. from your mistakes probably. Yeah, 100%. So like, it, just, it, just, it just takes time, you know? Yeah, and I think it's it's, it's good because, you know, we say kind of learn from your mistakes and kind of figure these things out as you go along. But then it's also nice when you've got, you know, people like yourself that are putting out the information out there as well to kind of help people not necessarily have to make the same mistakes. You know, I, I, I sit here and I, I know that as a trainer, I have the benefit of knowing, you know, okay, I've, I've torn these ligaments, I've torn my pec, I've done this, I've done that, I've done whatever. I know all of the steps how to not get there now because I've gone through mm-hmm. that. You know, I think it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's always good when you have that, again, it's that kind of like intro reflection where you kind of go, okay, I know how not to do it. I'm going to teach people how not to do it. And then at they the, don't have to go through at, that as well. At the same time too, brother, like we have to, and I'm not just put my hand on man. I don't care how good you are, or feel the best, whatever, you have to keep an open mind. You have to be a sponge. Like, man, I'll listen to anybody on anything about strongman or technical lifting because at the end of the day, it's knowledge. Whether it works for you or not, you've got to be an open book because someone's been through something that you haven't been through and if they're happy enough to pass on that information to you, take it on, man. Like, half the time I'm I'm with awesome strongman or anybody, I just ask questions. Oh, why do you do that? Oh, but, oh, okay. And when I get back to training, I said, oh, I really liked how they did that. Maybe I'll try it. Oh, it doesn't work for me. Oh, well, this I try it. Oh, hang on, that was. That did work for me. Wow. You know what I mean? You've got to be open-minded. And a lot of people out there ask. And that's why I feel, not, not putting anyone out, that a lot of people don't move forward in their careers or whatever. It's because they're stubborn and they don't go, oh, you know, their way is the best way, which is fine. But not always your way is the best way. There's always another way exactly 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 it's so true like that there's more than one way to skin a cat which is an expression that i that sam bolland used in the last, last podcast i did with him but it's so true you know just because that this is the way that thor deadlifts doesn't mean that you should deadlift like that mm. just because this is the way that you press doesn't mean that i should press like that everyone is so different but yeah it's a case of that you know we see these people and we go oh well eddie hall pulled 500 kilos in a deadlift so i need to change my deadlift to look like that and then i'll start to be able to yeah. pull big numbers it's like no 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 dude. you need to go through that the kind of trial and tribulation of going okay Let's try this slight technique change. We're going to move a stance in. We're going to do this. We're going to try that grip. We're going to go under over instead of double over. Like try all those different things out because you just, you never know what you're going to find. And it might just be a case of that one day you turn up to training, you do that slight change and it's like, oh, dude, I, I just put 50 kilos on my deadlift. What the fuck? It just, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's it's crazy. I love that. Okay, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. So... Wrapping this up, I like to end this in the same way. I ask the same question to everyone. I'm very interested to kind of hear what you're going to say. So I want you for uh, for a split second to take yourself back to, to your younger self. So around about kind of, you know, 10, 11, 12, very, very impressionable age. You can, in part, give one piece of wisdom, knowledge, a mantra to live by, a thought process, an ethos. What bit of information do you give to your younger self? to help you get through everything you've had to go through in your adult life now to get you to the point that you are today? How do you help them get that? Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> um, wow. Um, one thing we just spoke on, keep an open mind. You know, I was stubborn in my younger days. That's why I know what it's like not to listen. So one of my big things is keep an open mind. You know, people have the opinion. That's all it is. It's an opinion. It's up to you whether you use it or not. Um, and the strength of a strong man, take your time. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. There's so many people that have just started strong man and already trying to break records. Like, this strength is strength. But any sport in general, good things take time and you've got to put the work in. You're not going to become an overnight hero from doing that, that's how you get injured, okay? And um, that's one big advice I want to give to everyone out there who's starting up in a sport, not only strong man, is take your time. But the biggest one I want to leave with everyone out there, 
set a goal. Set a goal in life, in business, in your sporting career. Set a goal because if you set a goal, this is the path you're taking. If you don't set a goal, this is the path you're taking. All right? If you set your goal, you set a plan together, you're going to do a straight line to achieving it. Not going around the hill and up and down the hill, you're going straight to it. So that's one of been one of that'll be my biggest advice out there to everyone, also to myself. Set your goals in life and work your ass off and you'll achieve it. That's, that's perfect. I literally could not think of a more perfect way to end it. Rongo, thank you so much, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Man. <laughs>